So today we are going to talk about the medicinal uses of Creeping Charlie. Now Creeping Charlie has lots of common names including ground ivy, gill over the ground, and many more, and is less known by its scientific name Glaucoma heteratia. This lovely plant with tiny purple flowers has gotten a very bad reputation due to its behavior as a rather invasive and aggressive ground cover that chokes out any other types of plants that you may be trying to grow in your lawn or in your garden. And so many folks try to eliminate this from their lawns altogether. If you don't want this plant in your garden, I completely understand. But before you go ripping all of it out of the ground and just throwing it on the bonfire, maybe you should consider adding it to your next cup of tea. But before we get started, if you frequently visit this channel and find this information useful and informative, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button down below to show your support so that we can reach a larger audience and teach more people about the magic of plants that are growing right outside our doors. Type in Creeping Charlie in a Google search and I can promise you that the first thing that comes up will not be its medicinal uses. As you can see, the most popular searches are currently on how to get rid of Creeping Charlie. This poor plant's reputation unfortunately precedes itself. Creeping Charlie is a perennial plant from the British Isles that has been naturalized in the United States over the course of 200 years. It is often called invasive, but I like to think of it as a hardy survivor. In spring, it flowers as early as April, which means it is invaluable to hungry pollinators. It is easily outcompeted by tall grasses, shrubs, and trees, and prefers shaded areas with lots of cool nooks and crannies where other plants tend to not grow. And I think that it looks lovely in rock gardens. Creeping Charlie is often confused with other plants like henbit and purple dead nettle, which emerge and flower much later in the season. If it is early spring, you are likely seeing Creeping Charlie. I will do another video later on how to distinguish the three. Creeping Charlie spreads through stoloniferous growth, which means that the plant sends out runners that spread across the soil surface and establish new roots wherever the plant comes into contact with the soil. Because of its low growth habit and persistent root systems, mowing or clipping Creeping Charlie will not eliminate it. Yep, she just keeps coming back, so unless you are ready to use herbicides and other harmful chemicals in your garden, you might want to start looking on the bright side. Glaucoma heteratia is a member of the mint family, and its leaves are packed with vitamin C, iron, zinc, silicon, and calcium. It is anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, and contains compounds that contribute to cancer prevention. Its most active compounds are phenolic acids, which protect your cells from damaging oxidation all the way down to the DNA level. In traditional Chinese medicine, Creeping Charlie has cooling, drying energetics. This is likely due to its ability to reduce inflammation, its diuretic qualities, and the assistance it offers in draining backed up lymphatic systems. It's wonderful that this plant emerges early in the spring when the changing seasons can cause allergies and inflammation in our bodies. You can even enjoy it raw in a salad. If you are looking to enjoy this plant without letting it take over your garden or lawn, Creeping Charlie makes a beautiful potted plant when arranged in a hanging basket. There is a variegated variety of ground ivy that is grown exclusively for this purpose, but I will be using some naturally growing ground ivy for this example. Harvesting and transplanting is simple. The roots grow shallow and a large patch can easily be removed with a spade. I am placing the ground ivy into a bucket with an inch of water at the bottom to protect the roots from the transplanting process. While we pot this plant, I want to share a few thoughts on invasive plants. As you explore the world of plant medicine, you will begin to discover that many medicinal plants that we cherish in herbalism are in fact considered invasive, like raspberry, dandelion, red clover, and creeping charlie. Some of these plants are native, while others are naturalized to new environments over time and become part of the landscape. While we may despise these plants for the unwelcome competition that they bring, 
or for their role in displacing native plants, it is also useful to recognize that these plants could play a huge role in creating more resilient ecosystems as we face a changing climate. Invasive plants are hardy and can thrive in many conditions with little intervention where other plants might fail. We can be grateful that they grow reliably and are readily available if we need to use them. I understand that there are many downsides to invasive plants, but I hope this offers a broader perspective. Keep the basket elevated so that the runners can never reach the ground and you will have a beautiful early spring accent plant that you can use as needed. Say hello. Say hi, Puddin. Now, since ground ivy is a member of the mint family, it's safe to try in a lot of different ways. You can add it fresh to a tea. You can dry the plant and then use the dried parts for a tea, or you can also use the fresher parts to make a tincture. And as you saw earlier, you can also enjoy ground ivy in a springtime salad. Perfectly safe to eat straight out of the ground as long as it's clean. Ground ivy is quite simple to dry like most plants that don't have a, a very high water content. One thing to keep in mind if you're planning to use this plant in a tea, I personally find that using too much stem tends to give me a headache. So I, even though the stem is edible, I do avoid using the stem in my teas. I don't mind it as much in my tinctures. If you are air drying your Creeping Charlie or Ground Ivy, you can hang the plant from the stem for about two weeks. And what you're going to find is that the, the leaves and the flower dry first, whereas the stem remains a bit pliable. And so you can easily take the stem and pull the leaves and the flowers off and then just store them in a jar. So here I have a very small collection of dry Creeping Charlie that I like to add to my teas. They make a nice, I don't know, a garnish or a, an embellishment of the dried tea. I don't know what's the right term for that, but I just like the way it looks. Both the tea and tincture for ground ivy are useful for treating problems with the lymphatic system. So if you have slow drainage in the lymph nodes in your neck or in these areas in your sinuses, this plant will help to move the fluids through the lymphatic system and help drain them. This plant has also been reported to be quite useful for treating conditions like tinnitus, sinus problems, allergy problems. This is a great plant to include in your tea formulas and in your tincture formulas. So I like to make a ground ivy tincture using the stem, the leaves, and the flowers put into 80 proof alcohol. And I do use a wilted plant rather than fresh or dried. I like to avoid using completely dried because you miss out on some of the beneficial compounds as the plant naturally degrades but I also like to avoid using completely fresh plants as well because the higher the water content in the plant the more likely the tincture will spoil and I just like to mitigate any risk related to spoiling medicines. So here is my ground ivy tincture and this was tinctured for about six weeks and I have a little extra stored in this old glass spice jar. A cool thing to note about these glass spice jars is that they hold about the same volume of liquid as these dropper bottles. If you are running out of bottles to keep your tinctures in, these make a great substitute as long as you keep them in a dark environment since obviously this doesn't have the, the amber colored glass that would help to protect your tincture from the sun. So if you're new here, I have much more content on medicinal plants growing right outside your door. Feel free to check out those videos. I have one on dandelion and one on raspberry that I think you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.